first of all, I would like to say thank you for everyone who made, uh, who made it to this event. It was a rainy day. I'm not going to continue the song. And it is uh, great to see all of you here. Some of the faces here are familiar. Uh, some of them are new people. Uh, so I'd like to welcome you all to our second B2B Talks event. OK, so before we start, we want to know a bit more about you guys. So how many of you are selling SaaS products? OK, software as a service. How many of you are selling digital printing solutions? <laughs> <laughs> These are the guys from Corny Digital. Uh, how many of you are involved in complex sales? Cool. How many of you are selling solutions to developers? OK. So look around you. You probably need to talk with each other. OK. How many of you are selling products to IT departments? OK. And last question. How many of you are selling products to chief marketing officers or marketing departments? Cool. OK. So uh, I want to tell you a bit about B2B Talks as an event. The idea here is very, very simple. Uh, we want to help the community of B2B marketeers selling products abroad. This is very, very important. There are a lot of forums that solve the problems and the needs and answer the needs of local B2B marketeers. But all of you here have one thing in common. You are selling products uh, to non-Israeli markets, uh, which means that you are using, in many cases, digital platforms. It means that most of you guys have the same kind of challenges. And uh, it all started when uh, Farah, Farah, can you please uh, raise your hand? Farah here told me that she wants to do something new and something cool. And uh, one of the ideas that she raised was uh, creating a community event. And here we are. A second event is, uh, uh, is being rolling out. The goal here is to help you guys to know each other, is to help you guys share knowledge. We're just a platform here. We're buying beers. That's basically it. And we have the cool video cameras. Uh, I have here a very distinguished panel. Um, that includes some of the most uh, uh, advanced marketeers here in the local market. Um, and I would like to start with uh, you guys uh, presenting yourself. So. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Dori Harpaz. I'm the marketing manager of Incapsula. We're a spoon out of uh, Imperva, a public traded uh, company uh, founded by uh, Shlomo Kramer, the founder of Checkpoint. Um, we're uh, 50 plus employees, uh, have both uh, uh, teams in Israel and in, uh, Sa in San Francisco, and we're selling um, a SaaS solution for website security and performance. Uh, I previously worked at a B2C company called eToro, which is a social platform for trading, um, and I've been with Encapsula for more than uh, two years. Hi, everyone. My name is Udi Lettergor. I've been the VP Marketing of Panaya um, just short of five years now. Um, prior to that, I was a VP Marketing at two other companies, at iClick and at Sarin Technologies, a publicly traded company in Singapore, of all places. Uh, what Panaya does, for those of you who haven't heard, is uh, we help companies running ERP systems like SAP and Oracle uh, be more agile by responding to business needs. We sell to the IT departments in those companies, and we help them automate uh, maintenance and innovation procedures like upgrades and testing of ERP changes. Hello, everyone. I came for the beer. <laughs> My name is Saar Bittner, and I'm the VP Marketing for uh, Sysons. I recently joined there about a month or so. Um, before that, uh, the VP Marketing of Samanage, and before that, six years, I think, in CISAID, and including being, uh, building the marketing and sales department and finishing as the CEO. A um, few words about Sysons, maybe. Um, we develop uh, business analytics, big data analytics, something that... Uh, bring uh, an end-to-end -end solution to both uh, IT and CMOs. So we have the challenge of uh, differentiate uh, between two di really different two markets. 
Okay, so we call this event how to build a sales and marketing machine. And I have to admit that as soon as I sent it to the guys here, I got more questions than answers uh, because there are a lot of different ideas regarding what is a sales and marketing machine. So how do you guys define a sales and marketing machine? Where do you start? <laughs> okay, so uh, for me, sales and marketing is a uh, sales and marketing machine. I assume is a um, well-defined processes starting from visitor to win. Um, I think uh, basically defining the steps, making sure who's responsible for what. Um, I discovered this is uh, something that is far from being trivial. Uh, making sure that um, through the process we have, um, we have responsibility both in generating and hand off uh, the next step. I think, um, again, for me, that was the biggest challenge, making sure that visitors are turning into leads, turning into MQLs, turning into opportunities, and so forth. Um, and in each steps, we have clear responsibility on who's doing what and the way that it's being t you know, moved throughout the process. Okay, uh, I won't start from zero. I'll, I'll add to Sar's uh, definition. I think a couple of the characteristics that um, set Panaya apart from uh, some of the other marketing machines you're going to hear about tonight. First of all, uh, we weren't always as lucky as uh, SciSense to get uh, leads knocking on our door and asking to become customers. So <laughs> sometimes, sometimes we actually had to go out looking for them. Um, so, but, but I want to make a distinction here because uh, Sal said that he defines a uh, sales and marketing machine from visitor to win. So I want to add one step before visitor it's actually finding those visitors and that is don't assume they're going to come to your website because you build it but go out and look for them and we'll probably talk about how to do that a bit later and I want to also add one step after the end goal that Sal mentioned of making it a win I want to create a repeating customer okay uh, Panaya is based on subscription based annual subscription um, so we, we do need the customers to come back and that's part of our machine one last thing that I would add to the definition that's uh, being built here is assuming that you have a few salespeople that do their own prospecting and go knock on doors and when they're kicked out they climb back in through the window. You don't really need a machine for that. You just need some good old salespeople. I assume what most of us here today are talking about are a high transaction volume machine. If you want to process hundreds and thousands of sales per year or per quarter or whatever you're doing, uh, you need a or month or day. Mm -hmm. you, you need a machine for that. You need a machine for that because you want to optimize every link in that value chain. And I think that's part of what we're going to be talking about, how each of our companies optimize their sales machine and marketing machine to support thousands of transactions. Um, no, yeah, it's OK. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, they're right. <laughs> um, we all know that marketing requires uh, creativity. But what I've learned is that as a marketing manager, you first have to build an infrastructure of systems that are able to know exactly where the leads came from, what are they looking for, uh, for what's the funnel that they should go through, and what are the processes that they need to go through. And if you don't build good infrastructure, which is first of all based on technology, and I hope we'll talk about it a, a bit later, then you can be as creative as you, as you can, but y we need to be able to track almost 100% of the leads we're getting so we can know exactly what to do with them over the funnel. So I'm always imagining it as if we were engineers drawing a diagram of pipelines over a, a piece of paper saying, this is where the leads can come from. This is the way we can contact them. How can we synchronize everything into one system that is very optimized to get the maximum results from each and every visitor or lead that we get. So for me, the, the, the foundation of building a, a marketing and sales machine is building the foundation of the technical system that you're going to use in order to get the leads and uh, optimize the results. OK. so. We all said a lot of very, very ambitious things, right? Um, how do you start to plan such a thing, right? So all of you came to your companies in different stages of your leaving your mark in your companies. Uh, we are at least 
trying to do it with, uh, with our clients. And it's always the same challenge. You go to a situation that is given. You have sales guys. Usually sales guys don't like marketing guys. You have marketing guys. Usually they don't like sales guys. You have the CEO trying to understand why he's paying, he or she are paying so much money uh, to get those leads in. And there is those guys from the marketing operation that are saying lead nurturing, lead nurturing, and it's the scoring is 65, it's 65. Nobody really understands if it's good or bad. So how do you start to plan such a machine? I, I think, uh, Kfir, uh, maybe just to understand and answer, because there are different stages, maybe we can ask the audience, where do we state in terms of the number of leads you're getting? Where is where are the challenges that you're currently facing? Okay, so first of all, there is over there, uh, Owen, can you raise your hand? There is over there a microphone for the audience. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you want to ask questions. Yeah, give us some insights. Are we, we talking? We you, how many here are having, how many companies here are having more than 100 leads per day coming to the system? Okay, I think this specific direction was a disaster. Let's say something else. <laughs> Okay, so we're, you know, bu building it from scratch, right? <laughs> okay, so um, I think uh, Dory mentioned uh, making sure that uh, the infrastructure, the technology around it is is um, is structured, and uh, we have the ability to to start something uh, from uh, from the basic uh, throughout the uh, the full process. I completely agree with that. Um, however, I think the challenge here when building a machine is to make sure that uh, we are not tracking or we are not forcing into different things that require that are required in, in a later phase uh, right from the start. Um, for me, again, based on my experience, uh, growing to where you need to grow uh, and doing the steps you know, each, uh, in each step you discover different challenges. We said challenges, right? Yeah. There are no problems, we just no challenge. Problem. Exactly, so in each step you, you discover different challenges um, and you need to solve them when it happens. I think infrastructure is important and I'm going back to this point, but I wouldn't necessarily uh, make sure that the whole machine is uh, ready before you know the the very basic. We have uh, we have people coming to our website or starting again, I assuming it's inbound. If it's outbound, then we have people starting to making phone calls and and things like that. Um, so I th I think the first step is is clear. You know, making sure we have something to work with, um, and then build it uh, build it accordingly. For me, one of the things. Um, that is really important, especially uh, the beginning is measuring, measuring everything. Really, I'm uh, I'm 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 a freak of analytics and uh, numbers and things like that. I'm I'm I assume you you all are uh, at least to some degree. Um, but when you start and build something from scratch, you need to be obsessive around numbers um, in order to make sure that you have something something going on. Um, I'll mention maybe later about, you know, going in too much analytics, but uh, I think I spoke too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a couple of, uh, of pointers, uh, the way I see what you should start doing to build your sales and marketing machine. First thing, um, try a few different things, okay? Go for your best bet for who you think your customers should be. Go for your best bet for what's the easiest way to bring them in. Once you see something is working, very quickly, plan a machine which will allow you to scale it on a galactic scale. Now when I say galactic scale, it's not sending, selling to two customers a day, it's selling to 20,000 customers a day, okay? Plan a machine that will be scalable. If you plan something that's only good till three or 10 or 20 customers a day, you will very quickly get stuck. So once you see something is working and be flexible while you're trying out new things and, and even though we're all data fanatics and, and we love analytics, you need to show some flexibility when you're trying different options and, and checking different customers. Maybe later we'll talk a bit about how to qualify customers. Try a few different things. Once you see something that's obviously working, scale it, but build a machine that's far bigger than what you currently need. If you don't, you're only going to get stuck in three or six or 12 months and you'll discover that the machine you built is, 
is too small for your needs. That's, that's one thing. The second thing is how to incentivize people and optimize the value chain. At Panaya, what we did is we made sure that no one judges or measures their own work. And what do I mean by that? If I'm in marketing, my team is measured on how many MQLs or marketing qualified leads we create every quarter. We don't get to judge how many we created, but the next link in the value chain, which is the sales dev department, sales development department, they give us our scores on how many MQLs we created. We only submit for their review what we think are MQLs. They can either accept or reject them, and we have a whole list of rejection reasons they can choose from. And if they can't reject it, reject it they accept it, and we get an MQL counted, and our salaries depend on that at the end of the month. Now, the sales dev people, they have a quota of qualified leads. They don't get to say how many qualified leads they created, but they actually submit calls, intro calls with leads to the sales department. The sales department can accept or reject an intro call. If it's accepted, sales dev get a point and it's counted as a qualified lead and their salary depends on it. Sales have a quota of dollars, how many customers and dollars they need to sell. They don't get to say how many customers they sold to. The customers either write a check or they don't. Now, doing this may sound obvious and salespeople are used to working like that. Marketing people are not used to working like that. Marketing are not used to being measured. Marketing are used, to be, use, are used to be the people who make the nice brochures and a pretty website. That's not the way modern marketing works. If you can't justify your value to the business, if you can't explain why you will be missed if you're not there, you're not going to find a job in three years. You have to show how you're driving business and the way of doing that is trusting enough in what you're doing and setting it up for success so that the next link in the value chain can judge your success and put one third or one quarter of your salary make it performance based. Every person on our team, including the Marcom manager, the automation specialist, the online marketing manager, and of course the regional marketing directors, a big part of their salary, at least one quarter to one third of their salary is performance based every single month. We set them goals every quarter. If they meet them, they get the salary. If they achieve it, they get more than that. If they, uh, if they exceed, they get uh, uh, overachievement. If they don't make it, they don't go home with the money. It's as simple as that, just like salespeople. And You'd be surprised how pinpointed everyone is on what's going to drive business and what I should be doing now. Because we always have 20 different things to choose from. What am I doing this morning? If I think of what am I measured on and what do I need to produce now that will drive business and help me make my salary, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm not going to uh, tweak the pretty website and make sure that the banner is a little bit straighter on the right because it doesn't matter. I'm not measured on that. It can be ugly as long as it works. That's it. I just wanted to add a lot of, a lot of times I've, I've encountered companies where the tracking mechanism isn't uh, built right. So not all incoming uh, visitors or lead are 100% uh, tracked. And I think that the basis for optimizing marketing activity has to be, we have to know exactly where the lead came from. And one of the problem is that if once we had only very traditional marketing channels, when you look at social marketing or content marketing, which is a bit harder to track, and when you get visitor who saw you on five different campaigns, then it becomes a bit trickier. There are solutions and we, we, should, we should make sure that we cannot use an excuse saying there's no way in tracking someone that w saw um, so a uh, status we had on Facebook and then Twitter. Everything is measurable today. Everything is tracked. Technology, I think, provides us with uh, very good uh, capabilities of knowing uh, where the leads came from. There would always be leads that just called us and we, will, we won't have any idea where they came from. But at least when we talk about online campaigns, we must make sure that our system are able to track exactly the, histo the history of the visitor and all of his activity. I want to ask, you, you mentioned find the simplest leads. What is uh, the simplest leads to find? Is that the cheapest leads? Is that the easiest to find? What's the simplest? Right, I was talking about the leads that are easiest to sell to. Uh, obviously, are, those are going to be the ones that open their morning by searching for your company name, plus how do I pl place my order? You're not gonna find many of those, credit but card in hand. <laughs> credit card in hand, running at you with a PO. You, you wanna start with those, but you're gonna quickly have to expand. Um, at Panaya, we, we changed our marketing shift year by year by looking at what were our most likeliest bets and who's gonna be uh, most likely to buy. 
Uh, at a certain point, we finished what we thought were the low-hanging fruits that everyone likes talking about. We found them in, by content marketing that maybe we'll elaborate on later, by uh, event marketing. Uh, and then we had to do a more of a top-down approach. We, we finished the bottom up. We, we met everyone that came to trade shows. By the fourth year at the trade shows, 95% of the people we were scanning and getting business cards from were already in our CRM system. So we had to do something else. And so we started a data, data analyst team. The, the head of our data analyst team is standing there drinking his beer, Sergey. Say hi. Sergey started an amazing team. Um, that I just want to tell the success story because I think it's interesting. If, if you can identify your market, and we decided our market are um, corporate enterprise companies uh, with uh, an annual revenue of $250 million and more with 500 employees. Now make up your own criteria of what you think your market is. What we asked Sergey's team to do is go ahead and uh, buy all the databases and all the technology you need. I want to know the list of all those companies in my target countries all over the world. We found about 28,000 companies who met those criteria. Then we asked them to deduplicate that list against our CRM system, so set aside everything we already know about. Now go to those companies that are in the target or addressable market and are not in my CRM system. Search through databases like Discover.org, like LinkedIn. Uh, use tools like Mintigo, like Leadspace. There are a million tools out there. Find which of them are running SAP or Oracle, because that's our target audience. Once you have the company, I want to talk to someone from IT responsible for the ERP system. Go search for him on LinkedIn, on uh, Discover.org, wherever you, you can find them. There are different databases in France. There are different ones in Germany. Go find the contact person. I want his email. I want his phone number. And then pass that on to, to sales dev so they can call him. And that's what Sergey's team did. They created thousands of warm accounts of MQLs that we had no idea were out there. They were not in our CRM system. They were not showing up at trade shows. They were not answering emails that we were sending through third-party lists. And by the end of Sergey's project, which is at, at, which is at its final stages um, in the next couple of months, we're now confident that we have at least 95% of our addressable market in our own CRM systems. That's where you want to be. We've talked about where we want to be, right? So we want to have this trackable process that gets everybody to get paid for based on their success. Uh, we want to have people like Sergey or other data-oriented people as a part of the marketing team that will be able to actually build this kind of machine. Uh, we need to have content at the end of the day. We don't care about the way that the banners look like. If there is any uh, graphic designer here, we're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, oh yeah, 15% this is usually, yeah. Um, but let's talk, let's do a, a bit of a deep dive. So we started working with marketing automation a year ago. It changed our processes, it changed our clients' processes. How many here implemented a marketing automation platform in their marketing organization? Okay. How many of you heard about marketing automation as a buzzword, but don't really know why the hell do they need to pay so much money for these strange products of companies that, does, that do tons of eBooks? Okay, so let's start talking about technology a bit, okay? This is the geeky part, right? Uh, so let's start talking about technology. So we have, let's say that we have the content, we're gonna talk about content in, in a second, but content needs to sit on something which is, you know, the technology behind it. So what do you guys do? Um, okay, so going back to what I've talked about, uh, drawing a funnel of pipes where uh, traffic comes from and needs to go through a certain process before it becomes a lead and a win, then I'll try to review for two minutes all of the technical systems we're using. This might sound uh, complicated, but it's actually not. And I don't recommend, recommend... Um, <laughs> it's actually not. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not. But uh, I don't recommend... Uh, today, understatement of the year. It's very <laughs> simple. Everybody can do it in the garage, right? These are the only 28 systems you that we're using. Yeah. Exactly. And we have four people just connecting yeah. the dots between them. <laughs> but that's it. <laughs> so first of all, I think everything begins with the way you uh, publish or advertise or distribute your content. For example, if you're on an ongoing basis use uh, social networks and you're uh, posting uh, statuses on Facebook and tweeting, there are two ways of doing it. So you can go to each of the platforms and simply use it. And you can use a technology that, uh, let's say a platform that distributes content for you on the platforms, but then it's trackable. 
Because if you just go to each social network and post it there, the chances that you would be able to late, later on know who came from a specific um, group on LinkedIn with a specific content would be much harder than ju just using one social platform or uh, monitoring platform that is able to uh, post everything on your behalf on all the social platform platforms and then track it back to your website. Now the second thing is, think about it, if people came to your website, they can contact you via uh, filling out a form, uh, calling you, um, maybe uh, having a live chat with one of your agents. We have to make sure that each of them, each of these systems, your email system, your, ch your live chat, which I recommend highly, your telephone system, is all synced to one system that is able to uh, track all of the leads so you can later on see, see all of them on the same system. So it's very problematic when you use one telephone system, a different live chat system, but nothing is synced. That's the, th the second uh, systems with, that we have to think about, the way customers are contacting us. The, the third one is the marketing automation. So I, w I won't start explaining a bit, but when I discovered marketing automation, I couldn't understand how could I market before without having it. Because actually that's the system that syncs all of the other systems into it, and eventually all of the information about a lead would be tracked there. So the marketing automation system, uh, same as Google Analytics, has tracking pixels on your, all of your websites, all of the pages, and it's synced with your live chat or telephone or whatever, and it, it gets the leads for the first time, it uh, filters the leads, it scores them, it, it nurtures them, and it's synced to your CRM, which is the next system I wanted to talk about. So the CRM, which is Salesforce or uh, Microsoft Dynamics, we all know them. Salesforce or Salesforce, Salesforce, Salesforce. or Salesforce. Yeah, yeah. mainly Salesforce. So, Salesforce. Um, so the, the way we can <laughs> sync between our marketing automation and Salesforce, what it, what it allows us to do basically, um, eventually my goal would be that if we have thousands of leads, marketing and sales can work together without even exchanging one word between them because everything is synced, is synced between the systems and everyone are synced with the funnels and procedures. So uh, if we have more leads, then we can make a higher threshold so not all of the leads will go to sales. But eventually when I look at all of the system, when you get to synchronize on an effective way the tracking, the social, the content that you're distributing, the leads that you're getting, the CRM that the sales are using, then you create a very effective marketing and sales funnel. And it requires a bit of help. For example, we're using to manage, managing Salesforce and, and marketing automation is not something that you can do just, you know, 10% uh, 10, 10 of your time. You need someone either have time or taking an outsource company as we're using that, it, that manages it for you because to really optimize the funnel, it's a daily, um, it's daily work, checking the campaigns, um, defining them, looking at the funnel, looking at the leads, getting insights from your sales guys. It's not something I recommend doing just on the way, if you're a marketing manager and you can think, yeah, I can also manage marketing automation and Salesforce. No, these are technical systems. They require lots of experience. And I can tell you, for example, that we're, we're using Marketo, which is a marketing automi automation system. Forget about getting any insights from it before <laughs> three months of using it. I mean, it takes at least three months of very hard work with a professional integrator to get it, but once it works, it's amazing. It allows you as a marketing manager to see everything on one system, manage everything from one system, and for us, for Encapsa at least, it made the, the biggest change. At this point, I have no idea what the question was, but I want to continue what Dory started. Uh, a few things about uh, marketing automation tools. First of all, we also use Marketo. Uh, that, that's our tool of choice. Uh, I can tell you that we, at a certain point, um, last time was a couple of years ago, did a very in-depth evaluation that took us two or three months against Eloqua, which is the second uh, leader in that field. 
We decided to go with uh, Marketo. Um, I'll fill in the reasons if you want in the break after the, afterwards. So that's our tool of choice. Um, one of the first positions, I think it was the third member of my team. I, I remember I've been at Panaya for five years. We now have a marketing team of 15 people. The third member of the team was a marketing automation specialist. Marketing automation specialist, that's a mini IT team within marketing. I don't think a modern marketing team can survive without an IT team, either like Dory explained, by outsourcing it or having an in-house IT team, which is a one-person, one-man show within your marketing department. I don't know how to run a marketing department today without an IT person. Um, wherever I go next, that's going to be the second or third positions that I hire. You have to get one, okay? Leave the graphic designer for last. You can always... Sorry, graphic designers. Uh, we're bashing them today. You can hire graphic designers from the outside. You can get a lot of things done from the outside. You need a marketing automation specialist. There are very few people in Israel that can do that. You don't have to get them in Israel, but, which is nice if you can. You need someone to do all that IT stuff. Like Dory explained, this is a daily job that takes hours of work. And as you start doing weekly campaigns, you're going to get a lot of data accumulated. You want to figure out what works, what doesn't work. Uh, let me give you a quick example, and then I'll go into what I'm sure lots of you want to know is what other tools are you guys using? Who wants to know about actual tools we're using? Okay, it's not just me. Um, so a couple of things. D just a, a quick example of something that uh, a lot of marketers that I talk to, I uh, talk to them about trade shows. Who here um, exhibits at trade shows? Okay, pretty much everyone. How many of you can track six months after the trade show how many people you met at the trade show? How many of them were new to your CRM system? How many of them are at early, middle, and late stage opportunities? And how many of them closed business? And how many dollars did you make for every dollar you invested in the show? OK, I'm not alone, which is good news. But most of you can't figure that out. OK, this is something that we developed with our internal IT system. We built an, a trade show ROI calculator into Salesforce. When I show these to, this to other marketeers who haven't seen something like this, there are jaw drops. Okay, I can tell you six months and two years after a show exactly how many dollars to every dollar I invested I made at that show, how many opportunities are in which stages in the pipeline, how many new accounts I met, how many old accounts I met, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you can't measure it, you can't manage it. If you can't manage it, you can't improve it. Okay, how are you going to request budget for the same show next year if no one turned into business from last year's show? Okay, I, I can't do that. So I measure everything and I improve it. And if the show sucked last year, I'm not going to include it in my budget next year. So that's an example of marketing automation and what it can do for you if you have the right people in IT. Um, a few of the tools that we, ch we chose at Panay and we use. So we use Marketo as our marketing automation system. Uh, we use a very exotic CRM system, salesforce.com. It was mentioned here a couple of times. Um, and the two systems are deeply integrated one with another. Uh, we did a lot of custom development within Salesforce. Uh, we decided to pass on a lot of third-party tools that were annual subscription. Don't you just hate those companies that charge you an annual subscription? We uh, decided to forgo a lot of those products and develop our own tools. For example, for trade show ROI analysis, for um, sales pipeline analysis, we developed a lot of these tools in-house. Um, if you still decide to go for an outside tool because you don't have a, a business application team large enough, I suggest you look at Cloud9. Cloud9, they do uh, sales pipeline analysis, which is, is very easy uh, to use. It looks very good. Costs a lot of money, but if you, uh, if you can develop it in-house, look at that tool. That, that was our runner-up um, if we wouldn't develop our own system. A couple of other tools, uh, we use Octopost. Daniel's sitting there, I said you should talk to him in the break. I think every one of the three of us uses Octopost. We use them for posting and monitoring our social media activities. So they allow you to automatically post on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, everything, and measure what you're getting there and who's sharing and who's liking. Um, other, use, other, other tools that we're using are Insightera, uh, spelled exactly what it sounds like. Write Insight and then add E-R-E-E-R-A, -E -E -R -E, so Insightera. Uh, they're an Israeli company, so is Octopus, so is most of these tools I'm talking about, by the way. Lots of Israeli yeah, companies. Is, well. is Tamar here? Who's here? Say hi. Insightera is there. Okay, so her boss, Mike, he's a great guy. Uh, we've been working with him for a while. I say he's a great guy because he took me to a conference in San Francisco three months ago. Um, no, he really is a great guy. And what Insightera do is they show you dynamic, targeted content the changes in real time on your website. That sounds fancy, right? What it actually does is, for a company like Panaya, that I have audiences that are both 
or either uh, an SAP oriented audience or an Oracle oriented audience, I can identify a company coming into my website and in real time change my homepage to show them Oracle content or SAP content depending on where they're coming from, what their previous behavior on our website was, uh, what uh, Dun and Bradstreet say about their company, what their company size is, a million different things. I can do lots of fancy A-B testing um, and try different campaigns on them. I can gain more exposure uh, for my content, et cetera, et cetera. I don't want to sound like I'm working for them. So check them out. Uh, they're, they're good stuff. They're interesting. There are other companies here who do similar stuff as well. Um, was there anything else I wanted to talk about automation? No, I think I've said enough. So you go. <laughs> well, um, nothing to add on the, uh, on the Marketo Salesforce. Um, however, since uh, you do, you mentioned developer, assuming you're starting again, it depends on really on, on where you are and based on, on the numbers that we just um, asked you to, could be that in terms of the number of fleets, you're not there yet. There are different systems uh, besides Marketo, which are typically easier to use and faster to deploy. Um, I used HubSpot for a while working uh, really, really nicely, a lot of uh, social integration. Um, Pardot. Pardot also, uh, something that I've used. I think HubSpot is easier, at least for me. Pardot is now part of Salesforce, so. But uh, in any case, there are options, okay? And I, I totally agree. Once you're past this stage, you need a developer. You need someone in-house taking care of everything. Uh, even if you're very technical, um, there's a lot of work to do. Uh, other tools, maybe that uh, if, if we mention tools, um, we're using something very cool. Again, small thing, but uh, I, fi I find it uh, extremely useful called Tout, T Out, um, aimed for uh, tracking all of our emails. Marketo has it, um, this functionality, but the fact that it's all sorted out in templates, very easy to, uh, to work with. Then you can measure everything. Again, coming back to measurements. Um, you can see, you know, different emails and how they've been uh, tracked and then things like that. And again, of course, everyone that opened and sent email, that's, that's obvious. One thing I forgot, which <laughs> is... Um, we have 10 more systems. Very simple. <laughs> no. It's very simple. At least for SaaS companies, we have... Usually SaaS companies... Um, offer some kind of a free basic uh, service, like a freemium uh, model. So for me, the holy grail is really uh, also succeeding, uh, integrating your service, your web application with the marketing automation system. Because one of the things we want to track is let's say someone has signed up for our free plan or one of our paid plans. I mean, if we could track what he's doing on the web application, is he active or not? Has he paid or not? Where he is on the funnel of activating the service, if that's integrated into uh, the marketing automation system, it's usually via API, then you really get all of the information you need, not only on the leads, but are actually on your customers, because one of the things we want to do is retention. We want to make sure that customers are keeping using our system, they are active, they are logging in, etc. So one thing I, I don't recommend passing uh, on is seeing if there is a way to integrate your systems, uh, uh, whatever the, your customers are using, with the marketing aut automation system. Uh, I'd just like to add to that. As you can see, it's extremely simple. <laughs> very, very simple. Uh, we will, uh, first of all, we will add the 655,000 links uh, to the tools that we just mentioned, to uh, to the website that we're launching for B2B Talks, we also send it all to you uh, in an email after the event. Um, regarding marketing automation, Marketo, Pardot, great products. Uh, very, very, very flexible. Uh, They're very, very good, especially though, we have to say that, if you have deep pockets in two ways, one, to pay their license fee, and two, to have this internal team. Uh, there, are other <coughs> there are other tools that are out there. One of them, a disclaimer, we represent them. But one of them is Acton, which is a simpler marketing automation tool, very, very good when you need to ramp up the operation in a, a, a relatively lower cost, uh, and still get many of the features that are exist in the more sophisticated tool out there. Um, there is another tool, Acton. Um, another tool that is uh, very, very useful that we use for our clients, and many of our clients also use uh, directly, 
is uh, a tool called Nimble. Uh, especially if you are in the complex sales world when the engagement with each prospect is very, very long and you really need to know a lot about the person. Um, Nimble is a, um, is a kind of, now they ruined the video for everyone. Uh, Nimble is a, a social CRM tool that enables you to, con it's connected also to the exotic uh, CRM system we talked about before. Uh, it connects to Salesforce, it connects to other marketing automation tools. And as soon as you put a first name, last name, and an email address in it, you get all the data uh, from the social networks about a specific person. The important point for B2B marketeers is, of course, the fact that you can get data from LinkedIn. So you're able to get from a first name, last name, and an email address, title, company, and so on, all the lead qualification uh, points. Um, what we do for our clients, what happens with a lot of our clients after we stop working with them also, of course, is, of course, the basic notion, measurement is everything. What you can't measure does not exist. Okay, um, and when you're talking about awareness, that we didn't talk a lot at all about it, uh, there are also additional things that need to be measured. Uh, in the previous panel, we uh, people said that the only role of marketing is to bring in leads, uh, but leads start with awareness. So there's another tool that we're using a lot, um, even though it's less targeted for uh, for B2B marketers, but still very very helpful in order to understand what is the overall uh, view of a market. And this is Tracks uh, that enables you to really take a topic, identify all the key people talking about it, and then you can, if you build a smart process, you can basically take the people from, that you have identified there, and push them through, uh, through the funnel. If you use this, the disclaimer, then I can use as well, right? Yes, of course. Just uh, as, I, as I told you, I joined Sisense a month ago, and uh, one of the things that I had the chance for me, it was the first time is using business analytics, our own product, uh, throughout marketing. And guys, this is amazing. And I know I'm selling you something here. So there are different tools, I, I assume, that can do the thing. But still, getting the whole uh, systems that uh, we know, you know, we have in Marketo, we have in Salesforce the ability to have a lot of reports, but having everything integrated into one solution, business analytics with dashboard that can really mash up all these sources and create different kind of dashboard that for me, again, as I said, it was a complete surprise, an amazing one, really good one, uh, and take you through some, uh, some really, a whole different level of, of analyzing your data. So. Okay, before we, uh, we move on to the next couple of questions, question from the audience. Yes. Uh, can you go please to... Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, just a quick question. I think it's nice to B2B SaaS uh, solution. What about B2B to enterprise solution? Like you're sending a chat to management and then you don't send it over the internet. Okay, so the question was, how do you use all those cool things when you are not selling uh, a SaaS product? So I, I can start from some of our clients. Some of our clients are selling to telecom uh, vendors. Uh, there are telecom vendors selling to telecom operators, which is exactly that. Um, it's a different kind of challenge, but a lot of the things that were, we talked about don't really change because at the end of the day, you still reach the target audience through the same channels. It might well be that in specific markets, events will be more important than a LinkedIn group. But at the end of the day, you need to track your leads. You need to, um, to know how to bring them into your website. You, know how to, you need to know how to uh, mm -hmm. evaluate the quality of each of the sources of the traffic that you're bringing in. Uh, and you need to know how to nurture them in the best way. Now, at least automatic nurturing with complex sales doesn't, at least to my, my feeling, okay, and what we saw with our clients, doesn't work that well. You still need to have this sales guy that really knows the relevant person from the, from the company. But the basic ideas that were discussed here are relevant to every marketing operation, uh, especially in B2B. You need to know who, how people found you. You need to know how to track it. You need to put an ROI uh, number to it. Uh, you need to be able to go back to old leads and know where to uh, warm them up. You need to have all those signals in your website to know that someone is warming up. Um, just the, the, the weight of that, when you're looking at the whole uh, sales funnel, is different between pure SaaS play and you know, products that are being sold in complex sales to enterprises. This, this is my input. 
Are you really selling jet planes? Almost. So let me take the jet planes example and just show how we uh, convert some of what we discussed here, how I would sell jet planes um, tomorrow. First of all, not everything is online. Okay, we At Panaya, we do about 40, that's four zero trade shows a year. Okay, that's a lot of trade shows. That's uh, offline activity. We track everything online later, but here's just a, a sample story of, a story of how I would go about uh, selling jet planes. I'll go to the trade show for luxury items where my uh, uh, probable clients are walking around. Okay, I would not try and showcase my product too much and show all the features because next to me there are going to be 10 other booths showing their yachts and jet planes and everyone's showing their product. It's great. I would do something totally different. What I'm trying to do there is lead generation. I would turn my booth into a lead generation machine. I would try and grab the business cards or scan everyone who walks by the booth. The way to do that is not show the screws under the hood of the jet plane. It's by giving them a cool prize that they can take home to the kids. Okay, Panaya has become somewhat famous for kid prizes. Uh, we've been giving away anything from teddy bears to remote control helicopters to kites to God knows what. They've been working extremely well in getting people to line up for them. Okay, You wouldn't believe what IT directors earning $200,000 a year will <laughs> lie, beg, and steal, include try work all night to take off a, a non-removal sticker that we put on their badge the previous day of the show and they come by then in his face say, oh I've never been here before can I play again and then they'll, they'll come and, and talk about their second child which also needs a prize or else he, they can't come home so I would give away um, cool prizes forget the baseball bats the baseball hats and, and mugs and notepads okay no one wants those give something cool and interesting hopefully that's related to your product okay it could be a toy jet plane or something like that give those out Collect as many leads as you can. Uh, Panaya has come to the point where we go to a three-day trade show and we come back with 4,000 leads from a booth. Okay, That's 4,000 leads that we scan at a three-day trade show. Uh, if you want to know how, come to my workshop on trade shows in two weeks, how to build a killer trade show booth. That's a different story. I had to do some self-promotion. Everyone was doing <laughs> it. So I would start with that. Okay, Now, that's not enough. I collected 4,000 leads at the trade show. Now. You want to know if they're considering buying a jet plane this year. You want to know if they're the decision maker for buying a jet plane. How do I do that? So before you go to the trade show, you prepare an email campaign. This is where automation comes in again. Prepare with Marketo or Pardot or Acton or whatever email system you're using. Prepare a follow-up email to everyone at the trade show. You send it out the morning after the trade show. It says, hi, Bob. It was great seeing you at the booth last week. I don't care if you saw Bob at the booth. He was at the show. He thinks he met you. Hi, Bob. It was great seeing you at the booth last week. I hope you enjoyed the prize you took home for your kids. Here's some piece of content I thought you'd find useful. And then you send him something like the latest trends in jet planes for rich people like you, or whatever it is you want to send him. Now, all you need to do to download Bob is click here. When he clicks here to download, you ask him three qualifying questions, which is what you really want to know. And if your content is good enough, he'll give you the answers. So you ask him, do you have a budget for a jet plane this year? Um, are you considering one or more of these models? Whatever. Ask him your two, three qualifying questions. If the content is good enough, they will give you their details. Okay. Now, if you set it up right, you don't have to ask for his personal details again because you already scanned him at the show. So you don't ask for his email and phone number and title and name. You have all that. Your email automation system takes care of the fact that when you send him out an email, it looks anonymous to him. You're asking him for two or three qualifying questions. He doesn't care answering them. Your email automation system with the smart guy that sits in the back knows how to connect that data. And the morning you come into the office after the show, you have the 4,000 leads that you met at the show. 1,500 of them already answered your three qualifying questions. And now you can tell your salespeople what are their best bets to start calling. Okay, So that's one approach I would take to selling jet planes to enterprises. Is there a question? Where do I get a jet plane? <laughs> <laughs> He's selling them. OK, so the panel, uh, I have to admit that we have so many things to, co to cover in such a panel. So I think we will have to do another one. But if you pay us well if, yeah, I'm paying you so well, as you know, free beer. free beer, exactly. The only way to bring guys to talk about marketing, give them free beer. Um, I would like to ask you one more question before we open up for additional questions from, uh, from the audience. What about content? OK, I mean, we're all talking all the time about, yes, and they will come to our website, and we will track them, blah, 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 blah. It will be amazing. We have five different companies, and we're on Instagram, blah, 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 blah. And at the end of the day, we need content, a lot of it. And a lot of B2B marketeers know how to write amazing white papers, 
or at least readable ones, know how to write ebooks, but at the end of the day, we need oil, you know, fuel in the machine. How do you, how do you tackle that? It basically, it's all self-promotion, you know? I don't have to put a disclaimer, right? <laughs> okay, but yes. Um, I think it's, uh, we can talk about it uh, for uh, a whole panel. I'll say just one insight that I've, I've learned uh, over the last years that probably the best, con the best converting content you can put out there that would bring uh, qu uh, qualified uh, leads is usually not content you wrote about yourself. So whenever we talk about PR, which is very expensive, but even if you get people to uh, experts or opinion leaders to review your company or your product, or even better, compare it to alternative solutions, uh, that would be always bring better, uh, more leads and better leads than when you write about yourself on your blog, which is also very important and you distribute it. But always remember that people are much more influenced by, by reading objective reviews, doesn't matter where, than, um, than, than reading anything that even if, if you wrote that you're wonderful and you, know, you have great content, it's good. People are always a bit skeptical. So always try to think of creative ways of getting people to, to write about you. And the second thing about that is usually when you start, up your, when you start your company, you already have uh, bigger competitors which are out there already. So they already have the reputation, they have the target audience, they, they know the journalist, etc. I, I always say try to ride, the, ride your competitors. I mean, if you know that you have a very famous competitor, m get someone to review you compared to, compared to him. Because people are probably more interested in, in the competitor than in you. But if you can get your name of your company associated with the other company name, people will go and will read it because sometimes they look for alternatives. And you, you want to position yourself as the best alternative. So always try not only to get someone review. The, the big problem is that if, so, if someone is reviewing you, if someone comes and reads the review, he still asks himself, OK, but why is it better than what I have today? or why is it better than the number one solution today? So it, it still leaves the question open. You, al you always want to provide the answer for the question. And the best way is not trying to compare yourself to anyone, but trying to get other people to even try both services. And just if you believe in your product and you know that it's better, so encourage people to compare you to any other uh, solution. So I'll, I'll give you two tips on how to create, how to create kick-ass content for free, okay? This is free, okay. First of all, give all your money to Pravda, then you're left with no money, so this is how you create content for free. Two, two suggestions. One, if you're a SaaS company, use your own data. People, the data that you have in your system, that boring stuff that R&D are compiling day and night is the most interesting data you will ever find. L guys, I, I can't stress this enough. Uh, we work for a very exciting market, the SAP Enterprise Market. Now, <laughs> SAP come out with a support pack four times a year or three times a year, okay? If you wanna know everything about that support pack and how it's gonna impact your system, all you have to do, you go to the SAP site, you read pages one through 28,000, and you know everything there is to know about that support pack. The only one who does that is the mother-in-law of the CEO of SAP. For everyone else, Panaya issues three times a year, a, an SAP support packed fact sheet. It's a two-pager sheet, okay? It's very elegant, very pretty. It looks like an infographic. It has lots of charts. What we do is we have more than 1,000 customers. They're running their system on our SaaS. We know everything they're doing. We know when they installed it, how many things broke in their system, what they had to test, how long it took them to install it. We click a button. We run that analysis. We put it in a template, and it's out in about four hours. That's one of our best performing content pieces. It costs us zero, okay? Think about how you can use your data. I know uh, SciSense uses their data for some pretty funky stuff. Every one of you running SaaS has interesting data. If you don't know that it's interesting, go to your R&D, ask them what the hell it is they're doing, and learn about how you can use that data. I'm sure you will think of ideas that they find utterly boring, but if you think about a good angle of how your customers will be interested in it, 
th they will download that content. They will give you their details. They will do everything for it. Here's an example from an offline company, if you're not SaaS, okay, back to the jet planes. Um, everyone, anyone heard of the um, Blender company called Blendtec? Yes. Some of you have heard about it, okay? The story about the, the VP marketing, he walked into their warehouse one day, he saw the CEO with these um, goggles on, and he asked him, what, what are you doing? He said, I'm, I'm testing the, the new blades on the, on the blender, I'm putting marbles into the blender and seeing if it blends, then I know the blades are strong enough, because marbles are really strong glass. And the VP marketing was going, wow, that is so cool. Can I videotape you? And he videotaped him. He got 300 million fucking views on YouTube. 300 million views, okay, by showing him blending marbles. And that turned into an award-winning uh, YouTube campaign called Will It Blend? They now blend everything from iPods to iPads. I saw them do that. They had to break it in half on the blender to fit it inside the blender. They took the most boring product in the world. It's an ugly blender. It's a really ugly blender. And they got 300 million views on YouTube by showing things blending in a blender. Okay, if they can do that, you can do that with your product. That's one tip. Second tip, and I'm done. Uh, we use crowdsourcing. Okay, guys, use crowdsourcing to create content. Here are two quick examples from Panaya. Uh, we figured that our audience were SAP professionals. What does everyone care about? How much the guy in the, cubicle next to, in the cubicle next to me is earning? Is he earning more than me? What we did is, four years ago, we came out with the SAP salary survey. We sent out a survey to our database asking people to, con to contribute their salary details. I actually asked IT directors, how much are you earning a year? What is your bonus plan? And what are your expectations for salary raise next year? After that, I asked them for some demographics of uh, where you work physically, how many people in your company, et cetera, et cetera. I got 1,500 responses, okay? I know how much the IT director of GE makes. They gave me all that information. I promised to use it anonymously, and I did. We took one week to produce it into a nice report, okay? We made like a 20-page report with pretty charts. That report has, download, has, has created like 25,000 leads since by sending out that report with a good email and a good landing page saying something like, SAP professional, are you earning enough? Download the SAP salary survey and find out. And if you search Google for SAP salary, the first three results are the Panaya salary survey. We are the de facto standard in SAP salary surveys for the last four years. Okay, that costs us almost nothing to make. One last example, um, which is more product related. Okay, uh, initially our first product helped SAP uh, companies running SAP to upgrade for less money, less risk, less effort. So we sent out an email using Marketo. Um, I set this campaign up in one week. I was like the second member of the marketing team. I sent out an email to all the consultants I had in my database. I had a few thousand consultants. I sent out an email. I said, SAP consultant, this is your chance to get your name out. Uh, I'm putting together the ultimate SAP upgrade book. I'm going to give you credit if you give me your two best tips for an SAP upgrades. I'm going to send this ebook out to a million members of the SAP community. Within one week, I got hundreds of responses back from consultants and integrators, from SAP, from HP, from IBM, from a gazillion other Indian firms you never heard of. I took a week to edit their Indian English back into English. I put together a book. It cost me zero dollars, people, zero dollars. I, I did the Word document myself. And I started uh, publishing that as the big book of SAP upgrades. That book has created thousands and thousands of lead because I sent it out to third party lists and to my house list for nurturing telling people that these integrators will charge you hundreds of dollars an hour, but now you can have all their advice for free. I've compiled hundreds of the best SAP upgrade tips out there. They're all in this 27-page booklet, downloaded here for free. Just give me three details I need to know on the way, and that's created thousands of leads, okay? So to summarize, two things. Look at your own data, talk to your R&D. Your data is the most interesting asset you can ever create content from. Second, use crowdsourcing to create interesting stuff like this. It doesn't have to be about your product, but it can, and that's free content for you. Great tips. Um, I think uh, looking inside your data is something uh, significant. In Sysense, as mentioned, we've done amazing things around, around data, of course. Um, but to add to this, I, I think one of the things that are sometimes um, we don't look enough is our internal resources, especially outside the, uh, the marketing. Uh, for me, the best ideas uh, came, or maybe not, the best, but a lot of them came from speaking to different peoples in different departments. I spoke with R&D and discovered amazing things. I spoke with the developer actually in, in the marketing and got one of the best campaigns ever. So you need to speak, you need to just set time to, I don't know, 
15 minutes, 20 minutes, sometimes over coffee, sometimes over lunch, saying we need different content, different ideas, and you discover amazing things. Again, that I'll just add the following. As soon as you have this basic content, this source content, the secret is repurpose, 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 and repurpose. Meaning, you have the salary uh, uh, survey. Okay, so you download it in a gated content for as a Word document, and then you create a video about it. Then you create an infographic about it, and then you create 16 blog posts about it, and so on, and so on, and so on. You build a machine that what it does is takes the hard thing is to get the source content. This is the biggest challenge. As soon as you have it, use it again and again and again, but just changing the format, changing the delivery method, uh, and so on. One best tip you can give to people here who want to build a sales and marketing machine. I sent it to them the questions and email before that, so they were ready, but okay. Who wants to start? I didn't prepare, by the way. Just thinking about uh, right now. For me, the best tip is get the best people you can get. Um, that's definitely been my idea throughout uh, everything I did. It's just uh, I'm I'm doing a lot of interviews before making sure uh, before deciding and making sure I get the right people. Um, don't compromise on, on the right team. Uh, it's really important, especially those first few people that when you're building a new team, um, worth you know doing more research. Uh, it's always you know you're always under stress to make sure that you have the graphic designer in place. Uh, but um, Just hire <laughs> I'm looking for one. Um, but uh, but making sure you have the r the the right team is is crucial. I, I would add we talked a lot about measurement today. Every marketing activity that you do, think in advance. How are you going to measure if you succeeded? Okay, if you're going to try something and then try to figure out how well it went, you're going to be in trouble because a lot of these metrics you have to set up and define in advance. So when I'm planning a marketing activity, I'm already building the measurement tools into the activity itself. Whether I'm going to a trade show, so I need to know what I need to collect. If I'm doing a social campaign, I need to start using the tools before I go social, not after. Because if I know how well I did, I'll know if it's worth continuing to invest in. I'll be able to go to my management and say, look, this actually works. I want more money to do it. Or I can say, you know what, this actually doesn't work so well. I want to take the money and do something else. So plan your measurement in advance of every activity you do. It'll make your life a lot simpler. Um, regarding hiring the right people, so a lot of times small companies are um, str struggling with who should be the first or the second position in marketing, marketing that, then we sh that we should take. Udi said that definitely the second or third person would be uh, the marketing operation um, IT guy. I'd like to say who is the first one I think should be. So. Uh, usually, the, what, what you can choose between is taking someone which would be responsible for the paid uh, channels like AdWords, I mean PPC or banners or remarketing, or taking someone who's, who would be more uh, responsible for uh, creating the, the organic uh, traffic, which, is, which means um, SEO, uh, social activity, uh, the content and the content distribution. Uh, at least for, I think, for most B2B uh, companies, I would choose first to go with the what I call the product evangelist, which is someone who's able to, one, uh, produce content. Even if he needs to consult with the product guide, he's technical enough and he understands the target audience enough to be able to create content on an ongoing basis. The second thing, he knows SEO, and the reason it's critical is that if you write great content, but you don't optimize it for SEO, you've wasted your time. Because if you want, for example, uh, a good article that you write to appear, uh, to be distributed for PR purposes, and it gets published in the New York Times, but it's not SEO uh, um, optimized, then the value that you would get with, from it would be very uh, small. So whoever writes the content, 
it's very uh, important that he, he knows how to optimize for SEO. And the third thing he needs to know is how to distribute the content. And the reason is, if you get one person to write the content and another person to distribute it and, an, and a third person to optimize it, then something will get lost in the way. I mean, the person who knows where to distribute needs to be the person that is on top of the content, either writing it or briefing someone about it and eventually optimizing it. And I think, I think that only the second position should be someone who knows how to manage budgets and, and advertise, I mean, paid advertising. All, uh, always first start with creating that basis of organic traffic, which is basically the best converting traffic, and do so by producing great content, distribute it in the right place, and optimize for SEO always. Good, so I think that everyone here have a quite an interesting to-do list at the end of the, f of the second event of B2B Talks. Um, uh, first of all, I want to uh, say thank you for all of you for joining me in this panel, uh, and thank all of you guys for being here today. <laughs> Our next event will take place in January, probably mid-January. Uh, we're still figuring out what is the topic. We'll send all of you an email with it. Uh, and you're, all, of course, more than welcome to stay uh, longer here and uh, have a chat. I know that I have a couple of people I need to buy whiskey for, uh, so that's a part of the job. <laughs> Tough life. Okay, so thank you very much, guys. Yeah.